What is happening, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. I am in a fantastic mood because I woke up this morning with a brand new Chevy truck sitting in my driveway. So in today's video, I'm going to be introducing you to the new adventure wagon that we're going to be going on all of our trips for 2020 and beyond. And there's some new things happening with engines these days in these 2020s, and I want to get into that. I think a lot of you are going to be interested in that. But first off, let's take a look at my old adventure wagon, Toyota Tundra. I'll just say I really like my other truck, my Toyota. It, it went places, like they say. It went all over. It just didn't happen to be four-wheel drive. It happened to be bad on gas mileage, but other than that, that thing never let me down, and I went on plenty of adventures in them. I had uh, three different ones, and I finally just decided I am going in some hairy places. It's time to, to graduate to four-wheel drive. And you'd be surprised what you can get away with with a good set of tires on a two-wheel drive truck, which is what I did with my Tundras. But one day, me and Lunkers TV were fishing together. We, we had separate boats, and I put my boat in, and I got stuck at the boat ramp, and then I put his boat in, and I pulled his boat out, which we have the exact same boats with his truck, which happened to be a uh, Chevy Colorado with a, a little Duramax in it. And I could not believe how much power it was producing. It was producing as much power at the wheels at that boat ramp, getting up that hill and pulling that big old boat out as my truck, you know, that's almost twice the size. And then we went on some fishing trips, pulling the big bass boat with the little Colorado with the little Duramax. And I was like, how is this thing producing this much power? This is, it doesn't seem fair. I started doing my research and I want to give a Duramax a try. I don't want a huge 2,500 size either that, you know, those things tow like, 30,000 pounds, it's insane. I just need a midsize, and I was like, they don't make that diesel in the midsize. But then when I started doing a little further research, I discovered that GM is starting to put diesel engines into their midsize trucks. It's supposed to be a really reliable engine. Duramax is a really well-known name. It's a bigger engine than, than what's in that Colorado, and it's supposed to be a really good blend of power versus fuel economy. But my trucks, for me, it's literally like a home away from home. I spend a ton of time in them on the road and literally just using the tailgate as, you know, that's my, my camping area. It's literally part of the camp for me. It's part of every time I'm, I'm loading a, a boat or a buck in the back of the truck, that tailgate area, uh, the whole truck just is, you know, it's important to me because that's where I spend a lot of time making a lot of these videos and everything. Now finding a white Z71 SEL edition, Texas edition with the Duramax motor in it, in this 1500 size Silverado, it was pretty hard to do. I got with Moritz Chevrolet, which just so happens, I did not know this, but, uh, the managers of both the places at Fun and Son and Marich Chevrolet, they're like really good buddies. And I guarantee you, if you're a Texas fisherman, if you've seen any Fun and Son boat trailers in the parking lot, there's a lot of them that are hooked up to Marich Chevy. So they, they cater to a lot of outdoorsmen. I was able to go test drive one that they had on the lot. It wasn't the exact one that I wanted, but they, they found one, they got it there and they're not the easiest to find. So a uh, big shout out to Maritz uh, for finding this truck and helping me get into one and really talking me through it. So without further ado, let's crank up this motor and let's talk about the horsepower and the torque. <laughs> Quiet, huh? It's insane. You know, most diesels you think of, they're just loud, the, the engine while you're in the car even is just, it's hard to even talk over in the older ones. They've come a long way in improving the sound dampering. But this one right here is so quiet. Like you almost can't even tell the truck is on when it's in an idle. You start to hear it once it gets up a little bit, but you know, for road trips, perfect. So what little I do know about the engine so far is that it's really not kicking out a whole lot of horsepower. I think it has 270 something horsepower, which really isn't a whole lot when you compare it to like their 5.3 models. And they even have a, a 6.2 liter uh, V8 model and those produce way more horsepower. 
but on the torque side of the game, it is great. It's producing like 460 something foot pounds of torque and at low RPMs, that's 1500 RPMs. This is probably the most exciting thing about this truck and the biggest difference from all the other trucks I've ever owned. But let's take a tour of the rest of the truck that makes it a really good adventure vehicle. Even last night when I was driving it home, you gotta be kind of careful. It's got some some sneaky power. You know, I looked down, I was going 85, and it's not just a big burst of speed, it's just continual power, which is what you need when you're pulling a boat or anything. One thing I am gonna miss about my Tundra is the uh, the camera used to sit like perfectly up there on the dash. And now when I try to set my camera up, the dash is like so high up against the windshield. It's just not a very good angle. Keyless entry on this bad boy, which is also different. Press that right there, wah bam. That truck starts up. And uh, it's got analog and digital. One thing that is new that I turned off is the heads up display or the HUD and it looks flashy on this screen because it's a LED. I'm not really all about it. So to turn it down, you just turn the brightness all the way off. It's like you're looking through the windshield. It's got the windshield has numbers in it and you have to adjust your vision closer versus far. Maybe it's my eyes, I don't know. We'll stick to some of the cool things I really like that I'm gonna use as an adventure wagon here. So it's got trailering options. You can go to the trailer, you can uh, connect all your different components, to keep track of the data. Uh, it's got trailer brake um, assistance. It has um, engine braking, which I think is uh, first in its class. So if you're going down hills and stuff, you can actually use an engine brake. Look at this camera, these camera angles, and you can shift back and forth. Like there's the back right there. There's the, the front of the vehicle. You also have different views of the front and back of the vehicle, so you can go above. Um, you can go full blown with a like CGI <laughs> truck in there. So that's an actual image of the parking lot I'm sitting in, and that is a <laughs> fake truck, obviously. You can view that angle from both front and back, so that's really nice. You could also go to your trailer camera, like if you had a camera hooked up on your trailer, you could view all the way back there. How they do it, it's like the, all the cameras are looking different directions. They, they stitch the image together and create one to get like an overhead view. Um, you could look in the bed, so you can see what's in there. When I put the cap on here, this view really won't matter, but probably the key one for most people towing boats and trailers. You got that real nice close-up HD picture of the hitch itself. So you can just pinpoint, get it perfectly so you're not having to go back and forth. And if you go up here, literally in the rear view mirror itself, you flip it up and it is a HD camera. It sees like six, six lanes back there or something. It's really wide. Um, that honestly is really weird. That takes some getting used to. Uh, so I haven't used it that much. Uh, just, I believe it flipped forward for now. Those things right there are huge for any outdoorsman carrying around trailers, gear, campers, things like that. Another fancy feature is the tailgate operation. You can go up and down automatically with the tailgate. So just with a push of a button, that'll go down. See it going down right there. That <laughs> is just crazy. And you hold it and that'll come all the way back up. You have to hold it in until it closes, but there, it's shut. Now, the thing I probably needed the most, four-wheel drive, but it's basic, you know? You have automatic, I don't know if I'd ever use that, but you got four high, four low, and two high, which is what we're in right now. And then for trailering, you've got your trailer mode, so that will uh, kind of adjust the, the uh, shifting of the gears um, to, uh, you know, give you more power where you need it and slow you down where you need it towing a heavy trailer. And some of the other nice features inside the truck for me is we've got a, uh, a 120 outlet up front, got one in back for charging. It has one in the bed as well. So if you want to get that fillet knife out at the boat ramp and just whoop, start sawing on them, you could do that through the power of the truck. Uh, the bed is also 
uh, lit. It's got lights all inside of it as well. It's got leather seats, you know, they are ventilated, so you get you get the butt breeze. You also got heated seats, so the butt breeze is nice in Texas, and then we've got a power rear window. I probably won't ever use that when I put the cap on there. All these little accoutrements are gonna be nice on, on road trips and with the family and all that stuff, but man, when it comes down to it, it's a truck, you know? I treat most of my trucks like a truck. I'm getting in and out of it with wet, muddy boots, you know, I'm putting dead animals in the back, I'm towing things, that's what a truck is supposed to be used for. But the things that really matter, the Duramax engine, the four-wheel drive, obviously, and then all of these, the technology and the cameras to help with uh, towing and trailering, trailer, trailering plus uh, just the additional features that you can turn on with the engine to help with that, um, that's really going to help. I've never had another Chevy diesel, but from what I've been told, this is a nice addition on the newer models. They put the def tank uh, access right there next to the fuel tank. I think it used to be under the hood and it was kind of a pain. So now you can just add your def fluid, which is something you have to have on, on diesels now, uh, right there when you're filling up. So it just makes it a lot easier to access. I even like the sound of this diesel. I am really digging it. But now I want to take this to, through a real world scenario. We're gonna hook up the boat. We might even go give it a little dangle. And actually at my, my parents' house, they don't live too far away. I've knocked over their mailbox before, pulling a boat out of the driveway. They have two big brick pillars like right on either side. And it's, it's a hard scenario to get a boat in. So I wanna see how the turn radius is on here and how these cameras could help me get that boat in that driveway without knocking over these mailboxes. And the first thing we're gonna look at is the tailgate view or the hitch view that's on here hooking up the boat. So let's check this out. These are like all the trees. I don't even understand how this works because it's showing like up into the trees. That is very crispy. Now I had this on my last truck, but it was not as crisp. All right, it's giving me the collision warning. Oh, this is nice too because I can see on the sides if I'm going to hit. I'm always like cautious because I have trees. <laughs> this is a tough driveway. Let's go right on the... Oh, yes. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. Wow. Bam. Something else that's going to be nice with this truck is putting the boat in the water. Some of the shallower ramps I've been to, I've had issues with my exhaust being underwater because my exhaust would be, you know, somewhere right over here. And with this one, it has dual exhaust and it's tucked up underneath the truck I think that comes on the Z71 package it is true dual exhaust it's not just like one pipe and a, a fake one love the position of the tow hooks right here the hook things that is like super easy some trucks it's tucked way up under there that's a simple thing but I really like that It's a 2,000 RPM, so it just feels like it's barely working. Just smooth. That's a really nice part of it. The one disadvantage of the diesel is it is a lower towing capacity. This one's rated for 9,000 pounds, and you know I think my last truck was 10 or 11,000 pounds. So many different views that I'm, I'm not used to it, and it's, it's almost like a, a hindrance at this point instead of uh, an advantage. I'm gonna start slowing down here and getting these little nooks and crannies, it might help though. But honestly, it's not, it's not wide enough. I have to look back, I can't use the mirrors. Okay, turn radius is good. I would say it's as good as my Tundra, which I really like the turn radius on that truck. It's a little blurry, it's a little dark. I mean, it's still helpful, but when you really start turning, that kind of goes out of the picture and it doesn't really help you. What you need is the overhead view. This is gonna take me a lot of practice to really get used to. There's literally a dozen different types of views. I still gotta use my mirrors. That's just, I am not used to this thing yet, but didn't knock down a mailbox. Uh, it's got power where you need it, towing uphill, not a lot of pop on the highway, but oh, it's those low speeds, a lot of torque. Now, one final test is actually at the boat ramp. I wanna see what that looks like, how that helps. And before we do that, I will say that 
they are going to be adding accessories to this truck. So I want to make this pretty much just like my, my other truck. I really liked a lot of the things about it with uh, the cap and some of the accessories, the rack. The nice thing about uh, Moritz Chevrolet is they back up right next to uh, 80 West Customs, which is like their custom shop. They put lifts, tires, grill guards, all sorts of things. So what we are going to do here, we're going to add some, uh, some Nerf bars, some steps, I gotta have that. I, I'm always like shuffling to the back at boat ramps so I don't get my feet wet, especially this time of year when it's cold. They come with smaller tires than um, the, the Tundra. I don't know if it's just because, you know, it's low, it's lower clearance to the ground or they just uh, wanna spend less money on the tires, but my other truck came with really good tires. So I'm putting the, the same BFG ATs on there. Um, they're gonna be a little bit bigger. We're adding a two inch lift, but we're keeping the factory rake. So a lot of times you'll see leveling kits, you know, two inch leveling kits. Uh, and I actually used to have one on, on my old GM truck, but we're gonna be adding essentially a two inch in the front and then a three and a half in the back uh, to keep the factory rake. And that basically is like how the truck is sitting now. It is, it is level because it has a trailer on it that's good for towing, it's good for balance of the truck. We wanna keep that because I'm, 80% of the time I've got a boat or something behind me so it's gonna be a little bit higher in the back but just lifted overall all right I think me and LFD are gonna give it a, a good old dangle and we've got some hog issues going on back here yeah I put up these lights uh, uh, they don't come on in the day but at night they're motion detector they uh, they go out about 35 feet so it should if they come like where Miss B is that should light up <laughs> Miss B might need to set up a little blind back here with the old bow. <laughs> so this is this is gonna be new to you too on the views. So you can kind of make a uh, a determination too if you like like these cameras or not. Uh, to me, they're kind of everything's so new and it's crazy. I like to use my mirrors. That's just what I'm used to. Yeah, I'm kind of, I like, you know, I trust my mirrors. So the, probably the most interesting part is pulling it out, but we've already pulled it up some hills with no problem. So I'm gonna step out and see where this thing sits in the water. So my other exhaust actually used to um, hit the water. This this ramp in particular is kinda of shallow. Woo, that boat's already sliding off. All right, go ahead and stop. Whew, it's taking off. Oh shoot, dadgum, hold the camera. <laughs> okay, we got plenty of clearance there, so that's good. Now we're just gonna do a little father-son dangle, see what we can come up with. This is actually dad's first time in the new Silver Bullet. And uh, we've come across a lot of bait and we did find some fish that are underneath in the deeps. They're like 25, 26 foot down. Look at them right there, sitting below that bait. Oh yeah, oh yes. Look at that man, that's nice. Oh, we're gonna get one bigger than that. Nothing wrong, nothing wrong with that one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I fished this spot eight hours and didn't catch a dang fish. Well, I come out here with you and I catch yeah. one like the third cast. Spot within the spot. There we got our shad and we got our customers right there. That is just amazing you can see this kind of stuff. That's just on the, the 2D. Let me switch over. I haven't really showed this that, that much, but that's what it looks like in in the mega, in the mega imaging. You can make out the individual things, but when I'm like vertical jigging, I kind of like to use the, the 2D. LFD, bring, bring it in the hammer. Yes, he's ready for the pan. We have found the megawatt concentration. Oh my God, that's nice. When you see that, you know you're gonna get bit. Oh, yep, things are happening. I have a fish on. Back to hay. Dad's hooked up. Oh, I just caught one. Yours is not bigger than mine now. No, mine's, mine, <laughs> mine's a baby. <laughs> and the kitty cat. I was right. I had a theory. I kept seeing all these fish glued to the bottom and they look big. I was like, maybe they're bass. But a lot of times catfish will sit around schools of feeding fish and just eat the scraps. And dad just got one. So that's a bonus whisker biscuit right yeah. there.
Well, we got a boatload of fish, me and dad, and he pulled it out of the water. It's just so effortless at the boat ramp, you know? A fully rigged boat, just slowly pulling it out. You could definitely tell a difference uh, with that versus uh, a gasoline engine. You're not gonna rev this thing up down the road and, and really, you know, feel the thrill of all that good old fashioned V8 horsepower. If this motor, if this truck is really all that it's talked up to be, I don't see why this is not gonna be more popular. We'll see how it turns out. I'll let you guys know, keep updated on the channel. Go ahead and smash that like button for just the good old bow tie. Fishing in America, bass boats, and Chevy trucks. That's just a pretty good combo right there. Me and LFD are gonna go sharpen up the knives and make some golden crispies. So, until the next video, LFG signing off. God bless you. I'll see you on the next day.